Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your Manic Pixie Dream Assassin for the evening. And today it's time for episode, I want to say six, maybe, of my Dishonored Let's Play. And we're picking up exactly where we left off, in the streets of the distillery district. Actually, no, it's... is this the... Di I can't remember which district this is. The Hound Pits is in the distil distri distillery distri district. This isn't that... I guess this is clavering. Um, anyway, yeah, that's irrelevant. So when we were here previously, we spoke to Griff, and uh, he mentioned our mask. Incidentally, this will not be accessible until another mission where we come back here later. So, there's something fundamentally ridiculous about Corvo's mask. It looks dumb. It looks go goofy. He's got, like... It looks like a cartoon skeleton from a children's, like, variety program in the 80s. Uh, it's very kind of Rainbow or The Muppet Show. Um, and... I kind of love that, but a lot of people... I don't know, if people think it looks cool, they're wrong. Uh, if people don't think it looks cool, they're right, but people seem to like it anyway. Anyway, um, so this is the main street here. This is Clavering Boulevard. This is um, an extremely realistically modelled, um, you know, Victorian or Edwardian uh, townhouse street, which I think is beautiful and very carefully, um, you know, it's referential to real places. It, I have been on streets that looked exactly like this. It just goes to show how uh, deep, careful, and extensive the research into kind of architectural styles historically in the UK and of this era were. So, it being uh, an expensive street for fancy people's fancy townhouses. Oh, hello, what's that? That's. Hmm, let's see. Can I steal that purse? Make a pass over here. One guy, two guys. There's a third guy over there. I think there's a fourth guy around here. It, hmm, I could probably steal that, but it would be risky. So it's only one purse, so I'm going to ignore it. Now up here is where we want to go. So this is the townhouse of Dr. Luigi Galvani. Before I actually talk about Galvani himself, I want to um, jump back to what I was saying about the mask, because there's one fundamental dissonance about the mask that really bothers me. When you're handed the mask, Piero tells you, you know, this is so that people won't know who you are. Everyone knows the face of the Lord Protector, therefore, if we- is there something? Yeah. Love a bit of vandalism. It's not breaking and entering if you don't break anything. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, he says to you that the oh god what was i talking about he says to you that your face is known to everybody because you're the lord protector you are a famous person within this world you are well known to everybody because of this you can't sneak around because people will see you and go oh hey it's the lord protector and then know that you're up to something and of course you are a wanted man with a vast bounty on your head but Wearing a mask that is extremely uniquely identifiable does not solve that problem, because the minute you get seen doing a murder, then that identity is compromised again. You wear this mask so that you can be n not obvious to people, but A, wearing the mask at all makes you obvious, because you're wearing a weird mask and people will be like, huh, how strange, you're wearing a scary mask. But also, literally, after one day of your exploits, anybody who sees your, your mask should be running away from you. Unless you're playing a full ghost playstyle, which most people don't. Now, there's a lot to say about Galvani and his officers. Uh, which I will do in a moment after I uh, take a look out here, because I don't want to cause problems Wait, for this young couple. Did you touch the door handle to Dr. Galvani's lab? Yeah, I think so. Then you have to scrub. The rats get their vital essences everywhere, the doctor said. Vital essences? Does that mean guts? I think so. So your hands need scrubbing. You're unclean. Unclean? That's nonsense. Can't we no, just- No, I told you. With rubbing alcohol or white vinegar. All right, all right. What is he doing there all day? Ambrose says he breeds rats that carry the plague. Your friends are ignorant. The doctor is a brilliant man. If anyone can save this it's him. The royal physician is going to save us. Meyer's new elixir is twice as good against the plague. I don't understand how Galvani can admire Sokolov. Royal physician or not, I hear tell he's a beast. 
a superstitious philanderer who spends more time with prostitutes than he does in the laboratory. Is this what it's going to be like when we're married? It is, isn't it? I hope not. I'm telling you now, I don't have the endurance for it. I personally like to see this as just a kind of a, you know, a bit of, you know, playful riffing between the two of them and not that she is actually dreading being married because that would be tragic. But guys, if you're arguing like this already, you really maybe should think it through before you get married. Like, I mean, I'm just a humble gay. I don't have much to say about marriage, but I do think that that's a good idea. I'll put you down gently in this chair so you can have a rest. Oh no! Unfortunate. Well, I hope he doesn't get into trouble. So, one of the things that I love about Galvani, um, by the way, his name is Luigi Galvani. This is identical to the name of the doctor in the 1700s who discovered the existence of bioelectricity. So, uh, the fact that they have identical names and they're both anatomists who work in understanding, uh, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit her down over here. Uh, I guess that's... No, she's gonna wake up with a horrible crick in her neck. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, so... It's not really worth reading that out in detail, but basically that just says that Dr. Galvani's most important day is... Actually, I do need to read that because I forgot what number it was. Uh, no, I don't want this. Invited to a soiree at the Boyle Estate, I won't attend because the 28th day of the 7th month, the month of High Cold, is the day I met Anton Sokolov at the Academy. Why would I tarnish the anniversary of the most important day of my life by list licking aristocratic boots? I have no time for fools. I will be solving the riddle of this plague. Perhaps I'll raise a cup of Tivian Red. So the most important day in this guy's life is 28th of the 7th. 287. Hmm, I wonder if that three-digit code could be important for any reason. Also, note that little wheel there. That's something I'm going to point out again later, because it's interesting and it's a little uh, game design related detail that I think is fun to talk about. But yeah, so... Oh, I've got too many bullets. I can't steal these bullets that I don't need. So there shouldn't be anyone on these upper stories uh, anymore now that I've knocked both of them out, which means I can just run around and smash stuff with impunity, steal everything that's not nailed down. Uh, what did I say it was? 287. Uh, yeah, you can tell I'm bad at maths because I couldn't keep talking while also recognising the numbers 2, 8 and 7. If I spoke, I would have gotten it wrong. Anyway, so Dr. Galvani is a reference to that real historical doctor, he, but he's also a very clear example of a um, literary archetype that I think was very common in Victorian literature, and even still today, that of the kind of like consumed, obsessed noble doctor who is desperate to find a cure for this one particular thing, but who also is very wealthy and well off and uh, doing all right for himself. His house is a kind of a beautiful... Um, example of an archetypical townhouse. It feels a lot like various historical residences I visited in real life, and um, I think that it... Ooh, let's not get spotted. I think that it does a good line in showing what these places might have been like when they were really actively currently lived in. Um, but the fact that there are only about eight paintings in this game means that you amusingly run up against this issue where um, he's got about six of the same painting in his house. Aha! Slackjaw. Wanted for various crimes. Reward 2,000 coins. So I think the reward for Corvo is 20,000 coins. Corvo assassinated the Empress, yes, but this guy is literally the most wanted criminal in the city other than you. Although, I think Dowd might have a higher, um, a higher bounty on his head because he's an assassin as well as everything else, which is funny to me. I can't help but imagine Slackjaw would be sort of slightly salty about it. Is that guy still there? No, he's gone. There's not actually anything worth stealing on the ground floor. There's one pouch full of coins somewhere um, over that way. There's a room here, which is the big kitchen, and at the back of the kitchen there's a pantry. The pantry is full of rat swarms. There's a couple of valuable things in there, but uh, nothing irreplaceable. So instead of spending a lot of resources to knock those guys out just to get a hold of it, I'm not going to. 
but having all of these paintings in one place is useful because it lets us um, observe the, the painting styles of this culture and what it might mean. There's kind of three major trends. One's, one is portraiture, which, you know, is very historically accurate that you would have a lot of portraiture. This one in particular is seen a lot throughout the game in different sizes, uh, rescaled and reproduced. It's actually a detail from a much, much larger painting. And there's also a painting of a watchman, which is another detail from this same painting. So, by recycling what is, what I think, one single piece of concept art, they're actually able to get three, um, three different paintings and then resize those to make it feel like they have a much like greater diversity of the art that exists on the walls in this game. Similarly, you see these um, replicated constantly, these, these samples, but in terms of the painting styles, the community, well, the culture of the, um, of the isles seems to reflect two pri- ah, oh, hi, that's that detail I was talking about. Seems to reflect two things. One is foreboding landscapes. This is kind of like an intentional counter to the um, Victorian painting ideal of the rural idyll, which is this very kind of like beautiful... Oh, there's a fun fact about this globe that I'll tell you later. This kind of very beautiful countryside. Oh, hmm, scratches on the floor. What could that mean? If you want to find the rat guts that you're told to find, you actually need to read this. Uh, only clean the floors. Don't clean my bookshelf. Stay away from my bookshelf. Ignore the bookshelf. Pay no attention to the bookshelf. Um, etc. So, yeah, it's clearly something to do with the bookshelf. Then you come over here and you see scrapes on the floor. A fake book? How curious. Anyway, so, yes, um, one of the two major schools of art that we see in here in Dunwall is these foreboding landscapes, which are counter to the Victorian ideal of the rural idyll, which is this kind of like lionizing of the, um, of the countryside and representation of it as a, as a beautiful, special place that will raise the spirits and restore the you know heart of people who see it people in this world clearly think of their landscape as hostile to them because all of their paintings of the of landscapes are incredibly foreboding and menacing there is this real sense of a fear of the natural world which i think re is reflected more like repeatedly in the themes throughout the game of the way this society works people here do not have a positive relationship with their environment uh so i'm not going to take these rat guts because i'm not poisoning the still I'm actually not going to read that out because it's uh, basically just warning you about a creature we'll find later in the game, the sewer crust. So, um, yeah, one thing I wanted to mention before we leave is that this is, I'm pretty sure, the only bookcase in the game. There is a common cost-saving measure in games where you make generic um, resources, such as these paintings, that can then be reused in various different places. That's why there's only two or three kind of bottles in the game, and you constantly see those bottles replaced and recontrasted, re recontexted all throughout the game, in order to get a lot more mileage out of a, a single piece of data in the kind of game files, and you know, a single piece of developer time to create that image. Also, note 287 scribbled on the blackboard here. Um, I think he mentioned that his, in that letter, that uh, the payment for his servants for the next couple of weeks while he's away is in the safe, and that the safe code is here. So there's two, even in such a small area, there's multiple ways to find the quest objective and the bonus, you know, loot downstairs. But um, it's extra interesting in this case with this particular asset because this is clearly a bookcase designed to move. We'll see it in archives and stuff later on where it's clear that the, the shelves are supposed to be moved around, but it's kind of funny that we'll see it sunken into walls as well. Because another trick that games often pull is don't make a new asset if you already have an asset you can use instead. So instead of, um, you know, creating a bookshelf asset, you might create or two bookshelf assets, you might create one tall bookshelf, and then instead of a short bookshelf, you just clip the first bookshelf into the ground. This is commonly used in like Bethesda games, but really it's it's done throughout the industry. Um, so, so much of game worlds boils down to smoke and mirrors. It's all clever ways of um, hiding things, because it's often cheaper and looks the same. So, let's see, we got... There wasn't anything in Galvani's. We got the one thingamajig that was over with Slackjaw. There's that one over there, and there's only a couple streets left to explore. So very soon we'll be heading into the pro mission proper. I'm kind of free with my mana because um, 
At this stage of the game, we don't have much to do with it other than teleporting, which always regenerates the same amount of mana it's spent to perform in the first place. So when you're playing non-lethally, really the only thing you use grenades for is to clear out rat swarms, but they are very useful for that. Because as you can see, one grenade can completely wipe out two entire swarms. Now on High Chaos, I believe that this um, area of the street is absolutely chock full of, uh, of weepers, although that might be on uh, mission 03. Um, as you play through the game, you get more weepers and more rat swarms the more killy you are. Ah, see, this was that note we found from the uh, Bottle Streeters that they were hiding stuff. Here is their sigil, here is the shitter under the bridge, as they so delicately put it. That guy looks like he's up to something. So the patrolling guards up here can get um, distracted by noises, which will draw them down here. If that guy sees a guard, he will kill them. But whether or not this guard runs down here and gets murdered by this guy get lost. is actually completely... Um, it's not random, but it's it's based on the systems in the game. It's emergent rather than random. Don't make me take that away from you. Uh, you could not if you tried, my good man. So what I'm going to do is experiment slightly here. I could kill him pretty easily, but if I throw that over there, Hurts. he'll turn around. The fact that he's turned around... Oh. Mask blocking your ears. I said shut Okay, this is wasting time. Get off me, blowhard. That's extremely rude. I hope you get eaten by rats before you wake up. You can actually teleport while you're carrying bodies, which is a lot faster than walking with them. Uh, where's Where would he not want to wake up? That's the real question. I could put him up here where the police will find him. Hey lads, this guy murdered one of you. I don't agree with you or what you stand for, but uh, especially not all of the kind of summary executions of people accused of the plague who don't even have the plague. Um, more on that story later, but yeah. Um, that guy's a dipshit. Gold is a whaler's gaff hand. Fifty years old at least. This guy fought for the Empress. Forget his old ass. I can't even remember the Empress. We tagged it plain. Under Clavering Street is ours. Come on. What's the take? 20. Plus two elixir. Look like 25 to me. Look here. It's 20. It's five each, counting boo. You want me to check your pockets? Let it go, kid. Don't call me kid. You think you can cheat me? So, when they start fighting, this actually gives us the opportunity to knock two of them out instead of to have to knock three of them out, which is useful for us. Um, but also, let's just uh, solve this problem. If you feel like saving everybody, you absolutely can. It's pretty easy to slow down time and dart all three of them, or uh, dart two and knock one out. But it's um, worth showing off that flame attack. If I never actually get into a, a fight with these guys, then you'll never see that they breathe fire. This is... Um, each of the criminal gangs in the city has their, like, one gimmick that's the, the one special thing that they do that the other gangs don't do. Bottle Street Breathe Fire, they, um, they spit high-proof alcohol. There's no implication about how they're igniting the alcohol. I like to think that they all smoke constantly and that um, that's the pilot light for igniting whatever it is. Can I get this guy without... Yes, there we go. This is risky because there's a ton of cops around here, but if we hide under the table, we're invisible, and if we put him under the table, he's nearly invisible. So, we want this. Corporal Medal at Meadows, we found this strange rune on the woman who used to sell pastries up the street. Not sure how she died, but since the thing looks superstitious, we set it aside for the overseers. After your shift is over, take them for disposal or whatever they do with them. Don't forget. So, <clears throat> one thing I'm going to return to and talk about a bunch later on is the position of runes and the outsider and um, bone charms and the way these things interact with each other and exist in a kind of spiritual or mystical um, ecosystem that is not simply there is a god and the god does god things. Um, I think I talked about this previously, that there is this idea of you know, the void exists and can be interacted with in various ways, and one of the most effective ways to interact with it is to gain outsider powers, but 
you know, the outsider grants you those powers. Well, is it on? What's it look like? Blow off, Hayburn. Go on. Toss the damn rat already. <laughs> Never gets old. <laughs> My deepest dream is to one day find this scripted event and um, with the ability to stop time so that I can stop time, remove the, uh, what's he seen? Oh, okay. He's he, So this guard got alerted because that guard was alerted. That guard was alerted because he went into the uh, police box and saw that there was a knocked out guy. Oh, fuck. Oopsie whoopsie. Um... So, because he was alerted, he warned the other guard. Guard behaviour is quite complex and interesting, even though it's reducible down to a very uh, simple system of rules. Which I'm sure I will talk about next time I manipulate some guards. For now, it's time to move the fuck along before we get in trouble. So I believe we've seen everything here. I can feel a great age ending. Yeah, if you use the heart just randomly, you just get random comments. One of the things I really need to remember to do is use the heart a lot more. I need to start um, hearting random people that I meet. So, here we are at the start of the uh, mission zone proper. Come back next time for, you know, extensive dissections of um, immersive sim level design and uh, systems design and all of that sort of thing, and some discussions of the religion in this world and the way that they work and make sense. Well, not that they make sense, but like, the way they are constructed as a system. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you later. Bye! If you like this, you can also follow me on Twitter for updates, stream announcements, and one-tweet micro-reviews, or why not donate to me via Patreon or Ko-fi, or just share my work. Thank you so much for watching.